Honolulu, Kona, Lihue, Molokai, Kahului. These codes represent some of the major airports in Hawaii. Most seem intuitive, but the code for Kahului has an intriguing story behind it. James Bertram Hogue was born in Lihue, Kauai in 1908. His youth was spent at Grove Farm Plantation near Nawiliwili Harbor, where he often witnessed Navy seaplane operations which triggered a lifelong interest in aviation. By 1929, Jimmy had become a licensed airframe and engine mechanic, enabling him to find work at a flight school on Oahu. He performed maintenance in return for flight time and was soon delivering newspapers to the outer islands. Within a few months, the now 21-year-old Jimmy Hogue was hired as a mechanics helper by Captain Sam Elliott of Inter-Island Airways. Just for fun, during off-duty hours, Jimmy flew a travel air for a local businessman. In June of 1930, Jimmy was promoted to mate, flying the S-38 amphibian. The mate's duties included fueling the airplane, loading the baggage, cranking the engines, and keeping the navigation log current. By this time, Jimmy had a limited commercial certificate, and he became a flight instructor for the Andrew Flying Service. What I loved about the stories Jim Hogue would tell about flying the S-38s was there were no navigation uh, aids back in those days, no VORs or anything like that. So you flew a compass heading for the right amount of time, and the island should appear out of the murk on the bad days, and there you are. They, um, they would actually fly along sometimes 500 feet above the water and looking for the white of the shore break as the time was coming up. So this was really tough flying that they did in the early days. On October 8, 1934, Jimmy was the mate with Captain Sam Elliott carrying the very first inter-island airmail. When the larger 16-seat S-43 amphibians arrived, it was Captain Elliott and Jimmy Hogue who flew the first scheduled flight to Hilo on December 20, 1935. In 1936, Jimmy's rank was upgraded to co-pilot but he still had to clean the cabin between flights, load bags, refuel, and start engines with the hand crank. He came up the hard way, I guess you know. He started out as a mechanic, and uh, he got to fly right seat on the boats, or the amphibs, I guess, the S-38 and the S-43. And I guess the, some of the pilots gave him some stick time, and then he worked his way up, and finally he uh, was put on as a co-pilot in the early days. So then he worked his way up and he didn't have the benefit of any military training like a lot of us had, which was uh, wonderful, but free and wonderful. <laughs> but he, he came up the hard way and he did a, a very good job. He's a good man, but well respected. For the first few weeks, Captain Sam and Jimmy took all the S-43 flights. As senior co-pilot, Jimmy helped train the captains on the peculiar handling characteristics of the high-winged amphibians. And eventually, uh, when the Sikorsky S-43s came along, um, Jim was uh, still co-pilot at the time. But there was a very interesting point. Uh, when the airplane was first introduced, this was a tough airplane to fly. The Sikorsky S-43 was a plane that Jim said separated the men from the boys. It was a t probably the toughest airplane Hawaiian ever had to fly. Jimmy Hogue was upgraded to captain in the year 1937. Beginning January 1, 1940, the Civil Aeronautics Administration required all airline pilots to be commercial rated. Chief pilots were required to hold an instrument rating as well. Captain Hogue was the only pilot at Inter-Island Airways to hold the required rating, allowing him to be designated as Chief Pilot of Flight and Training. With the arrival of the new DC-3 aircraft, Inter-Island Airways changed its name to Hawaiian Airlines in October of 1941. Captain Hogue was among the first pilots trained on the DC-3 and was witness to the strafing of the flight line during the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th of that year. The following day, he commanded the first commercial flight, dodging ground fire going into both Maui and Hilo. His first stop was actually on Maui on the way and there, when he landed, uh, one of the people asked the question, uh, do you mind if I inspect your airplane? And he said, no, why? He says, coming up the coast, uh, we 
We couldn't tell if you were a um, good guy or bad guy. Uh, people were shooting at you. We wanted to see if there's any bullet holes in your plane. And what had happened was, of course, that day, it was horrible weather. And all of the um, navigation aids had been turned off because of the threat of attack. So uh, Jim and his co-pilot had to fly just like in the S-38 days, down low and looking for the shore breaks. So uh, they, they went over to Hilo and it was the same situation over there. Very difficult flying and again people shot at them. Our own side people shot at them before they got on the ground. So I think um, he was awfully glad when that day was done. On December 1st, 1951, Captain Sam Elliott resigned and Jimmy Hoag took over as Director of Flight Operations. Captain Hoag worked closely with the Civil Aeronautics Administration in establishing the VHF Omni Range or VOR system between the islands and checking its reliability. A year later, Jimmy Hoag took part in the development and delivery of the first pressurized aircraft, the Convair 340. He ferried the first one from San Diego to Honolulu on November 11, 1952 to celebrate the 23rd anniversary of Hawaiian Airlines. In 1955, Jimmy resigned from his administrative duties and returned to the flight line. Two years later, in August of 1957, the Kahului VOR was required to have a three-letter code. It was designated OGG in honor of Jimmy Hoag. Well, the FAA needed somebody to fly, him, fly them around while they tested these VOR uh, ranges and see if they were actually performing as uh, they should. So uh, Jim Hoag, I believe it was um, probably um, DC-3 by that time, and he was flying them around uh, in an airplane um, to, to test these ranges when they were installing them at Maui. And uh, the word is, is that at some point uh, there was the need to n come up with a three-letter designator to name the, the VOR station at Maui. And they offered this, uh, Jim Hoag, since he was so instrumental in, in doing the testing and uh, moving things forward, they offered to name it after him and H-O-G-G. -G. So do they name it H-O-G or O-G-G? -G? Well, Jim thought about it, he says O-G-G -G is the way to go. And that's how it came to be. In 1957, Hawaiian Airlines purchased four-engine DC-6s. Captain Jimmy Hogue was often in command of these larger aircraft on chartered trips around the United States, Europe, and on military contracts across the Pacific, as well as on inter-island flights. The apex of Captain Hogue's flying career came in 1966, when he went to Long Beach, California for jet training at the Douglas Aircraft Corporation. He was soon on the line flying the DC-9. On January 11, 1968, Jimmy Hoag celebrated his 60th birthday and flew his final flight for Hawaiian Airlines. The route included a stop at his namesake, OGG. He started uh, on the S-38 Sikorskis when there were no navigation aids, flying just by looking ahead through the gloom and trying to find the shoreline coming up. And he went through those days, he went through the S-43s, he went through the DC-3 and World War II, um, the Convair, he eventually got checked out in the DC-9 jet. So think about it. This guy is your seat-of-the-pants pilot who makes it all the way through and retires as a captain on the DC-9. So what a career. Wow. The whole history of aviation. In one pilot's career, he did it all. On January 13th, his retirement banquet at the Hickam Air Force Base Officers Club was attended by more than 300 guests, honoring Captain Hoag's 41 years and approximately 25,000 hours in the aviation industry. He will be remembered forever as one of the pioneers of aviation in Hawaii. Hey, dear.